Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now in this video, we're gonna take a look at a new to market, all band, all mode, portable transceiver, capable of delivering 20 watts on HF and 10 watts on VHF and UHF. Now, if you're familiar with the Q900 radio that I've reviewed in the past, then this should look fairly familiar. Now this is the PMR171. Now before we get into the specifications and testing, let's take a look at what's included in the box. Now first impressions when opening up that delivery box, it revealed this rather large color printed packaging, which in my opinion was actually quite pleasant to see, as opposed to just a plain cardboard box. Now inside each component has its own box compartment, Inside this first box, we find a DC power cable and a USB-C cable. Inside this second box, which is rather heavy, we find a heavy duty rechargeable battery, which according to the specifications is a five amp hour battery at 14.2 volts. You'll notice the two sturdy clips either side of the battery. Now these attach directly to the case of the radio, which I'll show you shortly. Now also included is a light ion mains charger, which is used to charge that included battery pack. It works from 110 volts up to 240, so covers most countries. The supplied microphone is something we've not seen with this type of radio before, and it heavily looks like a Yaesu style microphone. Now what I can tell you is that each of the buttons have a function and can control the radio even without touching any buttons on the radio itself. Now, more about that later. The entire radio has a matte black color and the front panel has two protective ears either side to protect the buttons and rotary control. Yep, this radio has a built-in rotary control which can be used as a VFO along with changing features and functions. Now, I know this was one of the major drawbacks that some people thought of when they was looking at the Q900. You'll also notice that the antenna ports on the radio are mounted on the front panel, which gives this radio a kind of military feel. Plus it makes attaching and removing antennas extremely quick, so no fumbling behind the radio to remove or change antennas. The HF port, which is the lower BNC socket, supports from 100 hertz up to 74 megahertz. The antenna port just above this, which is a TNC style port, supports the VHF and UHF bands and that's from 74 megahertz up to 520 megahertz. Although this receiver apparently can receive up to two gigahertz. There is also an SMA connector in the middle of those two, which is used for connecting a GPS antenna when you have a GPS module installed. For this model though, I chose not to have the DMR option or the GPS module installed. I just wanted it this straight HF and VHF and UHF. Now there's also a headphone socket in between those two antenna ports. So if you wanna listen in more privacy, you can just connect a pair of headphones here and then pop them on your head. Over the right side, we find an RJ11 socket just under that rotary VFO. Now this is for the microphone. Now this type of connection, in my opinion, is much better than those 3.5 millimeter jacks that we've seen in the past. These just feel like a much better fit and they clip in. The sides are fairly open, which I presume is designed on purpose to assist with cooling the internals when in heavy use. There's also no speaker grill on the top or the bottom of the radio, so the audio will be coming out of those sides, although it does sound pretty good, which you'll hear shortly. Now also on the sides, we can see fans mounted inside, which incidentally, there's one on the other side as well. Now on the rear panel, which is completely covered when the supplied battery is attached, it exposes a few ports. Now the left chunky connector is where the battery connects electrically. We then have a barrel DC input, so you can still use the radio with another 12 volt power supply if you don't want to use the included battery. For example, if you wanted to use the radio at home. There's also a USB host port, which is used for updating firmware. Then there's a USB-C port, which is used for CAT control. Now this also exposes the inbuilt sound card, which you can then use with a computer and a digital application like WSJTX for Whisper or FT8, for example, or even SSTV. 
There are also four 3.5 millimeter sockets, which are labeled, and these can be used for PTT control, or if you want to plug in a Morse key for those of you that like to use CW. Now the included battery attaches like this, with these real heavy duty clips either side. And once clipped on, they're definitely not gonna go anywhere. It's a lot easier to place the battery down on a flat surface and then bring the radio down above it. It just makes sense and you can use gravity to try and locate that battery connection. Yes, plus you're still my 57 you're peaking uh, S9, but I'll give you 57 on... Now before going on air and attempting to make a contact, I wanted to set up the mic gain and compression just to ensure that I sounded okay. So after adjusting the mic gain, this is how I sounded recorded on my SDR receiver. Uh, this is Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey M Zero DQW. Just checking audio M Zero DQW. Uh, checking audio one two three four five. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Uh, checking audio 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 M Zero DQW. Now I think that sounds fairly good. So now it's time to make a couple of contacts. Now for this test, I'm going to use the supplied battery attached to the bottom of the radio. And then for the antenna, I'm gonna use my NFED half wave, which I've shown on the channel before. Okay, I'm listening for any call. Uh, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Good signal. Name's Dave here. QTH is Lockerbie. M0DQW. GMA UKI. Yeah, GMA UKI. M0DQW. Yeah, thank you very much. You're also uh, good signal here. Uh, 5 9 here. I'm down about 10 meters away. Uh, Mike 0 Delta Quebec Whiskey. Yeah, good signal. Name's Dave here. QTH is Lockerbie. M0DQW. Yeah, thank you very much. You're also good signal here. 5 9 here. I'm down about 10 meters away. Mike 0 Delta Quebec Whiskey. Yeah, good signal. Name's Dave here. QTH is Lockerbie. M0DQW. Yeah, thank you very much. You're also good signal here. 5 9 here. I'm down about 10 uh, the name here is Matt, Mike Alpha Tango. Mike Alpha Tango is the name. And uh, it's a lovely sunny but cold morning here uh, in Buckinghamshire. Microphone back to you from M0DQW. Yeah, fine, Matt, from GMA UPI. Yeah, you got the call sign right, Matt. Uh, yeah, it sounds good, Matt. I'm very surprised. You see, you're only running 20 watts. Uh, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Oh, uh, go again. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Good morning to you. Um, on this side, first personal is David. Mike Delta Alpha Victor India Delta. Uh, Mike Seven call sign. So uh, just ten watts on this side. Uh, Mike, back to you. Yeah, no problem. Thanks a lot, David. Uh, very nice to work you this morning. Uh, the name here is Matt, Mike Alpha Tango. Uh, yeah, nice signal into the UK uh, this morning. Uh, five nine, uh, very nice and clear. Uh, one of the uh, one of the strongest that I could hear uh, as soon as I turned my radio on. So I thought I'd give you a call. Doing well with your ten watts, not bad at all. Uh, I'm actually running around twenty watts. Uh, this radio runs uh, uh, full power around 20 watts and uh, uh, hopefully you can hear me okay from Mike Zero, Delta Quebec Whiskey. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Uh, Mike Zero Delta Quebec uh, Whiskey. Uh, 
Mike Viru Delta Queen uh, Week Pier. Uh, yes, go ahead. Yeah, very good. Very good morning. Well, it's morning here, probably afternoon over there in Russia. Uh, very good afternoon. Just wanted to say hello. And uh, the operating name here is Matt, Mike Alpha Tango, QSL. Hello, QSL. Hello, QSL. You are signal 5x9. 5x9, little Q is B. 5x9, the name Yuri, Yankee Uniform Radio Italy. The name Yuri and location near Moscow. Near Moscow. How do you copy? Now, one of the cool features of this radio, which will actually get used, is the SWR scanner. Now, once enabled within the menu, you can perform an SWR scan of the selected band. Now, this shows a neat little graph with an SWR plot. Now, this radio does have SWR protection, meaning that if the SWR reaches a certain threshold, which actually is adjustable, then the RF output power is reduced. So it's worth checking your SWR when changing bands or antennas, and using this feature makes it nice and easy. Within the menu system, there are a few features that will not work unless you have the optional modules installed, such as DMR and the compass feature. Within the set menu, you can adjust things like backlight, the LED lights behind the buttons, the VSWR protection level, and a whole host of other items. Now here's a snippet taken from the manual, and this details the functions that each of the buttons activate on the included microphone. Now there's quite a few here, so it may take you some time to remember all of them, but it's definitely a great feature to have, especially if you wanted to use this radio in the backpack or even a motor vehicle and you didn't want to touch the radio itself. Now the PMR171 does also support four meters, which is 70 megahertz for those countries which allows this band. Now I took some power measurements using my RF power meter and here are the results on screen. Now as there's many bands, it's quicker for you to just see the results like this. As you can see, all of the measured bands are slightly over specified power level, apart from 70 centimeters, which is just a smidge under that 10 watts. I was using a fully charged battery and using a narrow FM carrier while measuring the power level. The output of the power meter was connected to a 50 ohm dummy load rated at 100 watts. Now, unfortunately, my power meter does not go up to 70 megahertz, so I could not get an accurate reading for the four meter band. However, my meter read around six watts and its upper frequency range is up to 60 megahertz. Now, as well as measuring the RF power output, I wanted to check for spurious emissions. Now, on the 40 meter band at seven megahertz, we see that the second harmonic is around minus 70 dB from that fundamental. So pretty good in my opinion. Now I also observed a second harmonic on the 20 meter band at around minus 50 dB from that fundamental. So again, pretty good. Now up on two meters at 145 megahertz, the second harmonic is just over minus 40 dB from that fundamental. And up on 70 centimeter band at 433 megahertz, the second harmonic is around minus 30 dB from that fundamental. So to sum up, my first impressions are mostly positive with this radio. Now, if you do intend on purchasing one, then when you get it, you want to configure that mic gain and compression and tailor it to your voice and your way of talking. What I found was that if you run too low of mic gain and RF power, then the transmitted audio can sound slightly muffled. So just bear that in mind. But as you heard from the examples, once set up, I was clearly heard and I was given some great reports. Now, I know lots of you will have questions about this radio, so please feel free to comment down below and I will include them in an upcoming video on this radio. Now, I do plan on making some more videos where I'll be testing four meters along with VHF and UHF comms. But for those bands are not very active around here, so I'll need to take a visit up to my local hilltop. Anyway, guys, hope you have a great rest of the day and I'll see you in the next video.